first aid, a matter of life or death. Hello, welcome back to the Bug Out channel. Uh, thanks for taking the time out to click on and watch the videos. Much appreciated. If you can do, hit the thumbs up, helps the channel. Right, first aid. A very important subject, I like to think anyway. And no matter if you're into emergency preparedness, prepping, survival, hill walking, mountaineering, canoeing, or just generally enjoying the outdoors, first aid and first aid kits is essential. So this brief video is just explaining a few changes I've done on the website regarding first aid um, supplies and first aid kits. Now previously, obviously I had first aid kits available on the website, as a lot of places do. Plus I have my own bug out pre-made uh, med kit or first aid kit, IFAC, whatever you want to call it. But I found with the pre-made stuff, if one or two of the items were unavailable, obviously I couldn't sell a complete kit. So just like the bug out bags, the survival barrels, the, um, the EDC kits, I've broken it down so you have all the elements available on the website, whether it's plasters, bandages, you know, to name just a couple, isn't it? Plus pouches to go with it. And then you can build your own first aid kit. I thought there's a, a better way of doing it. I think that's much better. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show you what's available. Uh, there's some new items I've added uh, now recently. And I've got my own trauma kit um, packed here. And I'll show you what's inside, just to give you a bit of an understanding of what you can pack. And with that, I'm going to give you a couple of brief demonstrations of one or two items and the reasons why they're in, say, my pack. Right, we're in the parachute, and uh, before we get going, apologies if you can hear some gunfire in the background. Hear it? The boys are up on the range here training. Spent many a weeks up there in all sorts of weathers doing army exercises, but uh, we won't go into that today. We'll start off what kits are available online. Let's say there's a few different varieties here from your personal first aid kits. In here, you have some basic items. A couple of dressings, plasters, safety pins, a triangular bandage, that's all the good stuff. So that's a basic first aid kit, or personal first aid kit. And like with most first aid kits, it will depend on the activity you're doing, what sort of kit you want to carry. Then you've got the next size up, these midi kits. These are good pouches, waterproof zips, and there's just slightly more stuff in there. Hence it's a slightly bigger pack, isn't it? But again, a good personal first aid kit. Not too big, carry in your bag on your person. But again, it's just a small first aid kit covering the basics. Then we have the these new first aid kits I've got in. Bit bigger pouch. Good grab handle on this when you're putting out your bag. And this one's been designed for the outdoors. So there, it opens right out. You've got different compartments. Carrying all the essentials you need. From your dressings, tweezers, foil blankets, bandages. So again, a good comprehensive first aid kit designed for the outdoors with a good well-defined pouch covering all the basics. When it comes to the outdoors, obviously there's certain things you want to carry and certain things you don't need to carry. And again, that will depend on the activity you're doing, isn't it? Now I've got military first aid kits as well, which are a little bit bigger and they can obviously carry a lot more stuff. So what items, new and old, have I got on the website which will enable you to build your own first aid kit. Well, I've got a range of trauma dressings. These are new from BCB. Together with these. Now these are a good dressing. They all come vacuum packed, but I've opened this one up. When you open this one up, it's got a large dressing area or trauma pad, which will obviously cover um, quite a big wound. And like with all trauma dressings, the idea of these is to get a maximum amount of pressure you can on the wound to stop any bleeding, isn't it? So they're new from BCB and available on the website. Now all the medical equipment I get, I get from medical suppliers. I don't get it off Amazon or Timu or some cheap Chinese rubbish. I believe the one thing you don't want to scrimp on is your medical equipment, isn't it? Because like I said before, your life can depend on it or someone else's life could depend on it. Now to go with the new trauma dressing from BCB, I still stock the trauma fix dressings. Have done for a while. And um, yeah, these are a bit like the old field dressings but they have got a, a new pressure pad on the top. So when you put the dressing on, obviously wrap it around as tight as you possibly can. You've got a pressure pad there, which should go on top of the wound. As with any trauma wound, 
as you know, the best thing you can do is apply as maximum amount of pressure as possible to stop the flow of blood. So yeah, another basic, um, well-constructed trauma dressing from Trauma Fix. And the beauty of these, they pack down really small. Obviously you want to keep them in the, in the bag, it? keep them sterile. So that's a Trauma Fix. You'll have probably seen these on the website for a while. I've also got the OLES modular bandage. Again, another trauma dressing, just a slightly different design. Now there's a lot more padded area on the dressing, but these have also got a pressure applicator as well. So when you're, you're tightening your bandage up, it's got a little plastic thing here, as that squashes down, obviously applies pressure uh, to the wound. And also in the bandage as well, if you wanted a wound pack, you can take all the dressing out and pack that into the wound. So that's the OLES. Uh, trauma dressing, modular dressing, used by medical professionals all over the world, and a fantastic piece of kit. Can't always get them, um, but I have got some in stock at the moment. But what I have added to the website now, which is new, and that's the emergency bandage or Israeli bandage. These are a must, I think, for a, um, any trauma first aid kit, and um, one I find in my my kit myself. But the best thing about these is the pressure applicator. I'll give you a brief demonstration. You can put these on by yourself, say you've got injury to your arm because there's a loop on one end of the bandage. The rest of the bandage stays where it is. It's held together by a little stitch so it doesn't dangle on the floor. So the idea of these, say I've got a cut on my lower limb there on my arm. It's not easy putting it on with a coat on. So say the wound is there, ah, hurts, ah. you've got your pad, put that on top of the wound, with your pressure applicator just off to one side, feed your bandage round, go through the applicator, and then what you do is go back on itself. So when you pull that back on itself, that pushes it nice and tight on top of the wound, giving you an extra bit of pressure. And obviously just wrap it round. You want to cover the edges of the bandage first, so we get any contamination in there. Pulling it tight as you go. If you want to add even more pressure as you come round on top of the applicator, twist the bandage, like so. Twist it. So it ends up like that. we have got a clip on this end, which just feeds over the edge of the bandage. That's it. That's obviously, it's easy if you've got two hands, but if you had damage to your arm and you're on your own, you can apply this by yourself, as I've just shown. And you can feel that pressure there on top of that bandage. So that's the Israeli bandage. Brilliant bit of kit. Doesn't take up much room and a perfect addition to anybody's first aid kit. So as we're talking about severe wounds, we also got blast dressings as well. Not something you really need to carry. Um, but these are like a massive dressing, trauma dressing, covers like the whole area, chest. So um, something you might want to carry in your vehicle, your truck, it depends on what activity you're doing. So that's the trauma dressings, plus you've got things like tourniquets. Again, for a trauma kit, a must-have, but not essential for any first aid kit. We've got splints, these Sam splints, or anaconda splints. Bring a bit of kit, probably not ideal to carry as a, for a personal first aid kit, but if you're going out in a group, walking the hills, whatever, one of you should carry one of these, because these are brilliant for obviously brakes, strains, and a bit of support, you can, you can mold it around someone's arm or limb, just add a bit of support. Yeah, fantastic and uh, first style piece of kit. Plus we've got all the basics, from your, your dressings, your triangular bandage, foil blankets, your gauzes, plaster kits, safety pins, trauma shears, tick removers, your sterile wipes, burn dressings and gel, eye wash or saline solution. Brilliant for obviously washing out your eyes, if you get something to get it or even clean out the wound. So anything you need for a first aid kit, whether it's a personal one or, or a large one, is here at the bug out. So how do you go about building your own first aid kit? Well, first thing you need is a pouch, isn't it? So depending on, on the size of the first aid kit, We've got these small EDC pouches, 
ideal for a small personal first aid kit. We've got the tactical pouches of the, the Molly. Something similar I use for mine, but a slightly bigger version. You may want a tactical style pouch, like the splitter pouch. Loads of different compartments. We've got Velcro and Molly on the front. Opens right out. You could also use these medical pouches. Sometimes you see these as a wash kit pouch, but that opens right out. You've got different compartments. We've got all sorts in here. It's another med kit I put together. So what sort of kits are there? You've got to think about what is a likely injury I'm going to face, isn't it? So if it, let's say if you're just going out for a walk, you might not want to carry tourniquets, field dressings. You just sort of think, think about plasters, triangular bandage, small dressings, cleaning wipes, always good. It might be blisters. So some zinc oxide tape or blister plasters, they're a must, aren't they? Just the basic stuff you'll find in any first aid kit. Now, if you're going out in the mountains, you're going out in a group, you might be looking at hypothermia, maybe. So foil blankets, you might be looking at sprains and maybe even breakages. So splints, a cohesive bandage. These are fantastic. These are, I'll show you mine in a bit. You might think about bad weather bags or emergency shelters. And I went wild camping and you've got fires going. You might want to think about burn gels and burn dressings. Now you're out bushcrafting using edged tools, you know, knives, saws. In that case, then you want to think about your, your field dressings or your trauma dressings, maybe even a tourniquet. So yeah, the design, the size, and the type of first aid kit you put together will be determined on the activity you do. So what have I got in my trauma kit. Now this is just an example. If you can think of anything else should go in this kit, put it in the comments below. I'm always happy to hear the comments. So my little trauma kit, there is a few things I've got to put in this yet, but I'll just run through it quickly and a bit of a description um, or reason why I put the things in here that I have. So I've gone for, a, I suppose, military style pouch. Um, it's got Molly on the front. This is a Viper tactical pouch. Um, and in here I've got a glow stick so at night I can take this out if I have to snap it and see what I'm doing this pouch I like this one because the zips have got these massive pulls on it so you can easily find that and it opens right out the one modification I did do to this pouch um, it had these elastic sides so you couldn't open it right out so I cut them and just tied them together with a bit of power cord and that gives me another hole there to put more stuff in so what have I got in here? Well, this side is my trauma kit. So the first thing you want to grab if someone's hurt themselves is your gloves, isn't it? Right, you'll stop that cross-contamination, not only for yourself, but obviously the person who's injured as well. And I've got loads of cleansing wipes. Loads of them in there. I've also got resuscitation shield. Now you don't need these, but if you do come across someone who's non-responsive, they're not breathing, obviously you want to give them CPR. So yeah, put one of these on. It just protects yourself, doesn't it? So more cleansing wipes. More cleansing wipes. So this side is really bandaged. As I've shown you before, I've kept this one in the sealed bag. Um, some people take them out because there is another secondary sealed bag inside. And you can see on the top here, there's three different ways to open it. So say you come to someone who's really injured. There's blood everywhere. There's blood over your hands, a sticky mess. You want something you could open easy, don't you? So yeah, easy way to open the bandage so that's in that side sorry about the camera handle but i can't be bothered moving it so you're gonna all see it from there i'm afraid so next to the israeli bandage again trauma kit is my tourniquet now some people they worry about tourniquets realistically you need a bit of training to, to use these elements but don't worry about the tourniquet if you do put it on you're not going to kill someone um if you, you can't leave it on for too long, I think they've done studies where tourniquet's been on for about 15 hours and still no damage has occurred. Yeah, it's gonna be uncomfortable for the for the person who's injured, but it's better than bleeding out, isn't it? So you just gotta remember the tourniquet. Say there's a wound to the leg or the arm, you've got to be you know two to three inches above it because arteries, if they are severed, they do retract. So make sure the tourniquet is obviously above the wound. And if you do apply a tourniquet, Use a pen to write what time you applied it. That way when help arrives or you get to someone to help, they know how long that tourniquet has been on. Also in here is a emergency foil bag. Oh, there's a helicopter going over. Yeah, loads of different uses. 
from treating hypothermia, shock, or even signaling for help. The last thing in that site is my blister tape, or zinc oxide tape, they call it. Yeah, stop blisters, put it on like a second skin, but you can also use it with bandages, obviously tape them all up, save using safety pins. So that's that one side to my trauma kit. The only thing I'm missing out of there is my hemostatic gauze. That's the only thing I'm missing out of there. So this side, so the first thing I got is my cohesive bandage. This, this is great. Um, just carry one of these, saves you carry and all other bandages. What I've done, I've taken a, the tube out the middle, squash it down because um, these are self-adhesive. Some people call it vet wrap, but yeah, you can, you can wrap this round, use it as a support. And as you can see, it just sticks to itself. And it's not just a one-time use only bandage, just wrap it back up and use it again. Yes, it's not sterile, so you have to use this with a gauze, but it's a fantastic, very versatile piece of kit. Now you can get all different sizes of the cohesive bandage, but I've gone with this size, I think it's three to four inches, which is usually a good size. So I've been told. So um, yeah, get one of these in your kit, very versatile, and it saves you carrying loads of different bandages. But what you will need to carry with this is some dressings or swabs. It's five in here. You can cut them down if you've got a small wound, but put this on first and then you bandage on the top. So that's that. So on this side I've also got my trauma scissors, tweezers, got my saline solution or eye wash. Like I said, brilliant for obviously flushing out eyes or any wounds. I've also got some burn gels and a burn dressing. Like if you're out and about and using fires, it's always handy to, to keep a bit of burn dressings in there. Now I carry a couple of little eye pads or eye bandages. These are good for like very small wounds or if you do get something in your eye, obviously the last thing I want to do is try and pull it out is to get this over top of the eye and obviously to protect it. Now underneath there's another pocket so in there I got my triangular bandage, pack of plasters, 20 different plasters. I got a tick remover, I got a friends of lens in there. So that's really good for magnifying stuff. Doesn't take up much room. And that's it, that's my trauma kit. Like, like I said, there is a couple of things missing out of it, but that's more or less it. And that's all you really have to carry. Now, if I was out in a group in the hills, I would carry a few more elements in my bag. Like I said, Sam splint or Anaconda splint, same sort of thing. And to go with that are things like a notepad and pen, so I can write down any details if there was an accident or emergency. So there you are, guys. If you're prepping for emergencies at home, or you're just going out to enjoy the countryside, get online. I have a pick a, a suitable personal first aid kit, have a look what's inside, or a slightly larger version, or put together your own, isn't it? Whether it's a small kit or a large trauma kit. Again, it will depend on what the activity you're doing. Um, there's no need to carry too much stuff that, that you're never going to use. And also on the flip side, you don't want to be carrying too little gear, but if an accident happens, you haven't got the right equipment, isn't it? So uh, like I say, it's a life and death situation, or it can be. So yeah, that's my little trauma kit. Get on our website, have a look, have a go building your own. And if you need any advice, just put it in the comments below or drop me an email. And once you've got yourself a good first aid kit, if you haven't done so already, think about getting on a first aid course and get yourself trained or up to scratch. If you've done one in the, in the past, a few years ago, go and do a refresher. But it's good skill to learn, not only just for yourself, but for your family. And like I say, if you're going out in the countryside in a group, isn't it? It's always good to have someone there who knows what they're doing. There's a link below to a local company here that does first aid courses, especially designed for outdoors. So check that out. So get yourself some good kit and some good training. So there we are guys, there's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. There'll be more to come. Plus, like I say, keep tuned because there's some new exciting news about this parachute shelter and some upcoming courses uh, here in the spring. So keep tuned for that. And if you want to see some more videos, check that one out and that one. And I'll catch you again next time. All the best.